I once again welcome you all on the session on the herbal drug technology. So in the today's session, we are going to start the new beat, that is the drug interaction. We are going to discuss the herb drug interactions and herb food interaction. So I once again welcome you all on the session on the herbal drug technology. In the today's session, we are going to discuss the herb drug interactions. In this session, we'll discuss the drug garlic, more specifically, the side effects and the drug interactions of the garlic. So the garlic contains mainly the sulfur compound and used for conditions related to heart and blood. It is being obtained from the allium sativum belonging to family Liliaceae. It is also known as the lesson or the less. If you can see the chemical constituents of the garlic, it comprises mainly the minerals, vitamins, carbohydrates, amino acids, volatile oils, other trace elements, sulfur compounds, allyl, allicin, dialyl disulfide, allyl propyl disulfide, selenium, and uh, scoldinine. These are the major chemical constituents which are present in the garlic. As you know that the garlic comprises the sulfur compound. So the main sulfur compound is the glutamyle cysteine. And glutamyl cysteine hydrolyzed the product. It is known as the allyl. So after, after hydrolysis, we are getting the allyl. So when crushed allyl reacts with the enzyme allylase, it is going to form the allicin, right? So allicin is responsible for the odor of garlic. Then the some of the other constituents which are present in the garlic like a volatile oil, fatty acid, mucilage and the albumin. These are the, some of the other chemical constituents which are present in the garlic. Furthermore, it contains approximately 28% of carbohydrates, then organic sulfur compound, 2.3%, 1.2% of free amino acids. It comprises almost 0.1% uh, of essential oil, which contains mainly the allyl phosphate, which contains allyl propyl disulfide and diallyl disulfide. The amino acids which are present in the bulb are leucine, methionine, s cysteine, and the sulfoxide. And furthermore, uh, there are some of the compounds which are present in the garlic, like geranium, magnesium, zinc, vitamin A, C, and volatile oil. So these are the chemical constituents of the garlic. Mainly, it comprises the allyl, allicin, and the sulfur components. Moving towards the uses or the health benefits of the garlic, as you know that <clears throat> it comprises the sulfur compounds, isn't it allyl, allicin, and so on. So it is being used for the high blood pressure, then high cholesterol level, or the other fats in the blood and hardening of the artery. So mainly the garlic is being used for the hypertension. It is going to be used in the arteriosclerosis, isn't it? And the hardening of the artery. That is the main use of the garlic. It is going to be used in the common cold and the osteoarthritis. Furthermore, the garlic oil it is used to prevent the ear infections. It is having the properties like antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. So garlic, it is having a properties like antibacterial, antifungal, and uh, antiviral. The main uses of uh, garlic are, it is being used in the endometriosis, arteriosclerosis, then the diabetes, hyperlipidemia, in the hypertension, non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases, periodontitis, then stomach cancer, and uh, digestive tract infection. So these are the some of the uses of the garlic. Furthermore, the garlic, it is uh, low in calories and rich in the vitamin C, vitamin B6, and uh, manganese. So it is uh, one of the source of the nutraceutical for the certain vitamins. The garlic supplements help to prevent and reduce the severity of common illness like a flu and common cold. Then high doses of garlic appear to reduce the blood pressure. So it is going to act as a antihypertensive. Garlic supplements seems to reduce the total and low density cholesterol, particularly in those who have the high cholesterol. Garlic may help to improve the blood flow, which could prevent the erectile dysfunction. So it might be 
uh, useful in the erectile dysfunction like again saying garlic may improve the physical performance in the people with the heart disease so physical performance of the persons those who are suffering from the cardiovascular diseases is going to be increased then the garlic may have the or may reduce the lead toxicity lead is a heavy metal so garlic appears to have some benefits for the health of bones by increasing the estrogen levels in the females so it is going to be used in the osteoarthritis garlic and its compound could improve the male fertility and enhance the testosterone level and increase the sperm production then garlic is a good source of uh, antioxidant and may improve the sexual health and fertility and furthermore the garlic contains the antioxidant that protects the cells damage and aging and it may reduce the risk of alzheimer disease and dementia so these are some of the uses and health benefits of the garlic so moving towards the dosage so whole garlic cloves 2 to 4 gram per day or dried garlic 600 to 900 mg daily moving towards the side effects of the garlic no doubt the garlic it is going to be used for various diseases and disorders it might be used in the cardiovascular diseases it may be used in the erectile dysfunction it may be used as a, an antioxidant and so on still it is having a sudden side effect and the major side effects are stomach upset heartburn gas and diarrhea furthermore the bad breath and the body odor then loss of appetite then the allergic reactions then skin reactions and the bleeding disorders if we are consuming the garlic in the large quantity moving towards the precautions which need, needs to be considered very first thing in the bleeding disorders the garlic should not be given because it increases the risk of bleeding then uh, as you know that the garlic prolong the bleeding so it also going to interfere with the blood pressure it is going to lower the blood sugar level so before schedule the surgery one should not take the garlic or the garlic related product moving towards the drug interactions of the garlic very first drug interaction there is garlic with the anticoagulants or the antiplatelet drug as you know that the garlic it is going to thin the blood anticoagulants or the antiplatelet drug also they are going to thin the blood so when we are combining the garlic with the these drugs might leads to the chances of bruising or the bleeding so one should not combine the garlic with the such types of drug for example warfarin and aspirin as you know that the garlic it is going to reduce the blood sugar level anti diabetic drug they are also going to reduce the blood sugar level so when we are combining the garlic with the anti diabetic drug that may leads to the reduction in the blood sugar level which leads to the hypoglycemic crisis when should monitor the blood sugar level then garlic with the anti hypertensive medication garlic it is having ability to reduce the blood pressure anti hypertensive drugs are also having the ability to reduce the blood sugar level so when we are combining the garlic with the anti hypertensive drugs there might be the severe reduction in the blood pressure and that may leads to the hypotensive crisis one should monitor regularly the blood pressure let us see the remaining drug interactions related with the garlic so the next type of drug interaction it is related with the absorption of the drug so garlic it is having the ability to reduce the absorption of a certain drug for example isoniazide so the absorption of the isoniazide is going to be reduced by the garlic and that may leads to the reduction in the effects of the isoniazide isoniazide is a drug which is going to be used in the tuberculosis garlic might reduce how much atazanavir is going to be absorbed by the body and thereby the there is a reduction in the plasma concentrations of the atazanavir which is going to reduce the pharmacological effect of the adrenaline the next type of drug interaction related to absorption that is the hiv and aids medication for example 
saquina wheel so the garlic it is going to reduce the absorption of the saquina wheel and which is going to reduce furthermore the pharmacological effect of the saquina wheel moving towards the next type of drug interaction which is uh, related to the mechanism that is a uh, enzyme inhibition so garlic is having the ability to inhibit the certain enzymes which are responsible for the metabolism of the tacrolimus which could increase the plasma concentration of the tacrolimus and thereby the effects and side effects are going to be increased so one should not combine the garlic with the tacrolimus then the drug interaction related with the substrate cyp2e1 so cyp2e1 substrates interact with the garlic so garlic might decrease how quickly the liver break down the drug metabolized by the cyp2e e2 so this could increase the effects and side effects of the these medication there are certain medication which are going to be metabolized by the substrate cyp2e1 isn't it if garlic is going to inhibit the these substrates there might be chances of rise in the plasma concentrations of the drug and which could increase the effects and the side effects of the drug furthermore the cyp3a4 substrate interact with the garlic so the garlic might decrease how quickly the liver break down the drug metabolized by cyp3a4 so this could increase the effects and side effects of the these medication so mainly the garlic it is going to act as a enzyme inhibitor for the certain drug isn't it and thereby they are going to lose the metabolism of these drugs and their concentration is going to be increased along with its pharmacological effects and the side effects so these are the drug interactions of the garlic so in this session we have discussed the drug garlic in brief we have seen the synonym biological source chemical constituent uses side effects and the drug interaction let us see the references so these are the references thank you very much